Hey, hey, them fiddleheads. Welcome to Station AOAS. I'm Alondra Levensworth of Nitrous. Delighted to be, ba to be back spewing my opinions on the latest Omni tidings and hearsay. Spewing indeed. Uh, per protocol, lest you be confused by any deviation, let's revisit this day in history. In 1769, Captain James Cook lands in New Zealand at Poverty Bay on the east coast of the North Island. In 1856, the Second Opium War, or Second Anglo-Chinese War, begins with the Arrow Incident on the Pearl River. In 1860, a telegraph line between L.A. and San Francisco opens. Dare I say, beep, 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 what's up? In 1942, comedy duo Abbott and Costello launched their weekly radio show. Were they on first? In 1971, John Lennon releases his mega-hit single, Imagine. I love that song. As you can see. Am I pointing to the Beatles? Now I'm pointing to the Beatles. I love all of them. Uh, in 1997, the most amazing creature ever to exist, an English bulldog named Victoria, is born. I love dogs. And in 2002, microscopic... Uh, in 2002, microscopic tardigrades are admitted to the Academy. I'm sorry, tardigrades. With special provisions to move them around campus to prevent their getting stepped on. That's good. In today's sports news is an update on the status of karate in the valley, specifically the San Fernando Valley in Southern California. At the request of our lazy script supervisor, I'm to add filler by giving you my thoughts on Cobra Kai Season 5. Yay. If you're hoping to avoid spoilers, prepare to be disappointed. Here we go, full spoilers ahead. Folks, folks, well, I am Alondra. Sarah is my, is my host here, but she's given me some notes to go over for this. She binged it in two days. Two days, my friends. So here are her notes. Um, oh yes. Let's talk the very, the very first plot point, the very first plot point that they had left us with. Yeah. At the end of the last season, the last season four just had me in an emotional choke. Just, it had me in an emotional choke hold. So, still a little emotional about that. So, what they left us with at the end of season four is Miguel's going to Mexico and Johnny's going to go get him. And what we saw in the trailers, he's bringing Robbie along with him because they're good now. They're good now. Father and son. Off on adventures, and adventures they do have. Robbie and Johnny in Mexico is just, mwah, chef's kiss. Oh no, my dragon. She can't take it anymore. Can you take it? No. But Robbie and Johnny in Mexico, chef's kiss. Robbie hustling a hustler, eating a hot pepper, chef's kiss. Johnny breaking a surfboard in half. Oh, chef's kiss. Robbie not having to stay an emotional brooding boy all season. Wonderful. See, this is what a lot of people on the internet were talking about. He's so serious. So serious. We'll never get along. Oh, I'm in Cobra Kai. I've got to punch people. I'm not being a good mentor. Now he just gets to say, Dad, stop saying that. They're pronounced chicharons, not chicharons. Well, he doesn't actually say that, but the intention is there. And speaking of people that are in Mexico in the beginning of season five, of course, the one they went there to get, Miguel, he's all over the place. He's all over the place this season. He found his dad. That's great. He realized his mom was telling him the truth all along. His dad's a dangerous guy. It's bad. We're afraid for him a little bit, but he gets back okay. And from there, from there, he's trying to, he's doing all the relationship stuff that we see in the, uh, the baby soap operas that kids do. 
I'm still a little confused why, when it comes to asking for a relationship advice, not from the adults, but from his friends, that he's asking the person in the unhealthy relationship for advice, but you'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean. And our girl from the wrong side of the tracks, Tori Nichols, she's still on her journey. There's a lot of soul searching she's doing, making an alliance with Crease, who's also doing some soul searching. Um, controversial opinion, I'm kind of proud of both of them especially after what goes on. Watch it. Watch it. You'll see. You'll see where I'm coming from. Uh, big shake up in things. We know that, uh, that Carmen and Johnny are our major adult ship for this, for this show. Carmen takes a pregnancy test. Comes back positive. Johnny's going to be a dad again. She's going to be a mom again. Everything's happy. Everything's scary. Everything's tense. In the meantime, Robbie and Miguel, who are going to become a blended family sometime in the future. We haven't even talked about a wedding. Is there going to be a wedding? We don't know. It's going to be super cute if and when it happens. But... Robbie and Miguel are still fighting, saying, we're never going to get along. We fought too much. We don't see eye to eye. And Johnny's trying his hardest to get them to resolve things, especially because they're both going to have a new baby brother. When, and he finally finds, finally finds a way for them to get through it. We start to mirror a past event, a past traumatic event. He's tries, he tries to call it off. But the boys resolve it. And it's beautiful. And Johnny, in the heat of the moment, accidentally reveals that they're going to have a little brother. We're scared. We're scared. They think the boys are going to be mad. But instead, they're even happier. Positivity! And on a... And on a funny, spicy note, you remember that uh, spicy karate dream that Johnny has about Carmen with Here I Go Again by White Snake playing in the background? Carmen's got the fun dreams too. Remember when she said she was in love with Tom Cruise? Well, maybe she didn't say so in so many words, but again, the intention was there. We get a Top Gun dream. We get the homoerotic volleyball montage, except we can't really call it homoerotic because it's Johnny and Miguel playing it. But my girl, Carmen. Ah. Oh yes, more plot points. It looks like we're going to get International Karate Tournament next season, which is great. It makes a lot of sense for the show to go in that direction because we... We expanded as much as we could with Cobra Kai taking over everything. We can't really see more dojos because they're just expanding and taking over everyone as we see with Devin Lee's new dojo. My girl, Devin, who, because, yeah, I forgot. I'm like, why isn't she in Eagle Fang? But Eagle Fang had to disband. So, but she wanted to keep learning karate. Like I said, my girl. But then Cobra Kai took over her dojo, so she became Cobra Kai. But it looks like Tori on her journey is trying to warn her. So I do hope that my girl Devin comes back into her own rather than just being reduced to Tori's sidekick. Um, and on the subject of, subject of side characters, Kyler, remember him? The absolute piece of trash? From the first season, dated Sam and was a bully. He is low key funny. He is low key funny. If he weren't a terrible person, I'd be laughing harder. And of course, our boy Stingray, who's a little old to fit in with the kids perfectly, but trying his best, finally gets his redemption story. But most of all, most of all, Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fang are officially combining when they go international, but they leave us in the season without telling us what their combined name is going to be. 
Why aren't they Miyagi Fang yet? Jacob Bertrand, who plays Hawk, said in one of said in one of his TikToks where he shows us how, shows us how to do a karate kick. He says how to kick like a Miyagi Fang. Did he just make that up? Or was he revealing something he shouldn't have? We probably won't know until next season. And thus have been my thoughts on Cobra Kai Season 5. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. Finding staff is hard these days. Even here at Station AOAS, where we are in need of additional Omnicasters. Don't miss your chance to read Eye Roll Worthy Drivel for no pay. We promise it's fun. The Academy's new game, Omnopoly, is taking the internet by storm. Or rather, raindrop. Or rather, beat of perspiration. If you'd like to be in on the ground floor of something that may never take off, come play for free. Or let Ace Player Heather do the work for you in her spoilerful video shorts. The videos are short. She's not in her skivvies. And now for today's Straight from the Arts segment. I'll read an excerpt from Portals in, Portals in Prose and Verse, the fourth in the Omni Anthology series. Here's Nature, a Portal to the World Within by Christina Scheiman. Let Mother Earth Father Time and these mortal hands now build greater things than simple steam and steel contrived. We may do more, see more, be more than we are to be when we look at the way nature creates and seek to learn from the intelligent design present in all things, from the leaf to the redwood trees. We look to the stars and we ask what lies beyond our verdant planet when we have not lived in harmony with it yet. Moving in harmony with our earth will bring us harmony within ourselves, and in knowing ourselves, we shall unlock the ways to all life, great and small. If you'd like to read more from this compendium, visit the link in this video's description box. Wherever the heck they put it. Today's news report is brought to you by... Eagle Fang Karate! Sensei Lawrence just doesn't know it yet, but he will soon when he gets the sponsorship bill. Sensei Lawrence used to work for Cobra Kai, started his own dojo, Eagle Fang. That's how you know we got a good one. The word of the week, which you can also find on this channel, comes from Naturim the original tongue that served as the precursor to the Romance languages. The word is Plutua, and basically means please. See the pronunciation video linked below to learn how to spell it in, na in Naturim. In event news, if you don't yet have reservations for The Nightmare Before Christmas with Carolers next weekend, get them now. We really can't continue this Omnicast until you do. I hope you did it because I'm continuing. And now the moment you've been waiting for, the upcoming week's most auspicious celebrations. Curious Events Day, Fire Prevention Day, Smokey the Bear's favorite, Leif Erikson Day, as SpongeBob would say, Hinga Dinga Durgan, uh, Moldy Cheese Day, Sukkot at Sundown, Canadian Thanksgiving Day, Indigenous People Day, that should be every day, International Newspaper Carrier Day, Angel Food Cake Day, it's my party day. Is it also and I'll cry if I want to day? Just wondering. Cookbook launch day. Looks like we missed that by several months. Uh, Old Farmer's Day. National Gumbo Day. Take your parents to lunch day. Take your teddy bear to work day. Or for efficiency's sake, you could take your teddy bear and invite your parents to meet you there for lunch. Uh, 
International Skeptics Day. Hmm, I'm not sure about that one. Moment of Frustration Day. <clears throat> Be Bald and Free Day. Can't celebrate that one. Uh, National Dessert Day and World Egg Day. That concludes today's Omnicast for Station AOAS. I'm Alondra Levensworth, and I, I know how to pronounce Charis des Hommes.